mirror talk. Is that my mother now behind the glass, looking dark-eyed and weary, as if doubting whether I can be trusted to count pills, check blood sugar, or put lancets into a sharps box? She is reproaching me, a child too often lost in songs or stories. I know mine was to be the life she never lived, the one she imagined as a gentle girl, a rich man's daughter in an office job, with older brothers at university. She never dared to flout her crabby father as her sister did. My father loved her smile. She loved his working class ebullience, but they married late and I was the only child. Mother, in middle age, you explained unhappily, I wanted a brother. How rhesus negative blood made you miscarry, and later babies died and left you ill. There could be no other children after me. I turned away from your shyness and delicacy, so slender wristed, slim fingered, all your shoes, size three not seeing the stamina you needed to live alongside my father's euphoric generosity, his drama of disaster and resilience, or how his laughing indulgence stole my love while you read school reports, met teachers, dabbed my chicken pox at night, feeling it was always to him. I turned in adoration. When Cambridge against the odds welcomed me in, a Midlands grammar school girl with some talent, but no self-discipline, always lacking worldly common sense, you mistook my precocity for ambition. But I was only a wistful dreamer. A contender needs focus and direction. I muddled on, loving the wrong men, until married and bearing a third child, I heard you sigh. And I thought you were going to be so clever. I did not emulate my uncle's lives, spent graciously in serving public good, their pleasure, clubs, fine meals, and cultured friends. Mother, forgive me, I did all I could they won position. I wrote poetry. <laughs>